Hello boys and girls and welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute since I filmed a conversation with Sab video. I honestly think that it has been since last year, which is crazy to think about, like eh, that was so long ago. Today's video is something that I really, really wanted to do because I felt like I haven't had a catch up with you guys in super long and spoken about anything to do with like mental health and staying motivated, staying connected to yourself keeping goal orientated and stuff like that. So I recently have felt like I have been stuck in a rut. I think that with me it tends to happen in stages where something will happen that affects me then another thing will happen and then like it kind of is like a domino effect and then suddenly I get knocked down and I feel like I'm stuck in a certain place or like I can't really get motivated again or be inspired. There have been numerous factors recently that have made me feel down. A couple of the things, I won't go too deeply into it, but a couple of things have been like just like my self-confidence. It has been so low, like it's been an all-time low. Honestly, so many more people struggle with things like anxiety, depression, lack of self-confidence than you would imagine. I myself deal with both anxiety and depression, but sometimes people are dealing with like struggles that you can't really see. And I really just wanna be honest and open with you guys and just always tell you the truth. And it's difficult because I'm like an advocate for talking about how you feel, but then I often don't do it myself. Like I'll find it embarrassing trying to speak about like being in a really bad place or having really bad anxiety, especially when people put you down and say like, you can easily come across as seeming like ungrateful for a lot of the things that you have or like, why, why are you depressed? Like you have a boyfriend, you have a flat, you have a good job, you have like money, you have a functioning body, like all these things to be grateful for. So I think it's really difficult to speak about sometimes. So I really want this to be like a safe space uh, where we can just like communicate with each other. If off the back of any of my suggestions, you guys have anything that you wanna add, feel free to leave a comment down below. So I've got a list that I wrote here on my phone of just some of the things that I find really help me when I'm feeling like I'm stuck in a rut or like I'm feeling down, things that I, try and do to bring me back to like a good place. The first thing on my list is having a clean environment or an organized environment. I honestly feel like the state of your living space is a reflection of your mind and vice versa. So if your space is chaotic, it can make you feel like you're in a little bit of a disarray or it doesn't help you have clear thoughts and be productive. I strongly believe in the whole feng shui kind of a vibe. Definitely trying to rearrange some part of your room or order things, pack things away will definitely make you feel good and feel like a little bit better. I often think that changing something around like in your environment or in your apartment, it can help you change your mindset. So when you arrange something or you feel accomplished and like a space looks sorted, you feel like you can sort other things. I feel like another easy way to try and keep things clean is to do something when you can. So when you get home and you take off the clothes that you're wearing, just straight away put them into the wash basket or if something's not dirty, just straight away put it in the cupboard. Otherwise, I feel like every single day it just easily racks up and you always say that you'll do it later and you don't do it. And if you rather do something consistently, then you won't have like a mound of things to deal with at the end where it feels like overwhelming. The second thing to do to help you get out of a rut or just feel like you're in a good place is to do with balance. And I call it the say no, say yes theory. I think I've just named it that now, but I strongly believe that you need a good balance of no and yes in your life. You need to know that it is okay to say no to some things you don't have to feel bad if you are too busy to do something or if you really, really don't want to go to a dinner this week because you feel like crap or to say no to potential, I don't know if you're a blogger or influencer, to say no to potential work because you just can't handle it right now. It's okay to say no. Sometimes it's empowering to say no 
and you can't take on everything like it's okay to need to prioritize and say yes to certain things and not do other things then on the counter to that also to say yes to things i think it's so so important to try be positive about things and to say yes to more opportunities and to say yes sometimes to things that might be out of your comfort zone so for example i'm a creature of habit and during the week i always work like every day i work and i say like exonerating circumstances or I am super super free and I'm pretty particular about it because when I don't come home and do certain things it really builds up for me and then that's how I feel like I spiral into like a bad place so I think what I lack is often balance and I think sometimes saying yes like a friend of mine recently said to me sometimes you'll be stuck in your routine of certain things that you do but you can feel so much more refreshed when you do make time to, I don't know, see your friends or do something different, like just go for like a drink and a pizza with like two of your close friends and chat to them. And often after that, you'll feel more invigorated. I think having more balance is super important. And coming from that point is something that I really like to do. And this helps me have more balance is I have a calendar in my house, which I literally just printed off the internet. It's got the month's kitty. No, scratching at the table. No, you're so naughty. Hey! She's so naughty. She like furiously, furiously scratches the table. It's just insane. Back to the point. So I have a calendar. Basically, it sits next to my fridge, like just on a cupboard there. And I write in there important things that I have coming up in the week. So like appointments or times to see friends or things like that like things that I might have do it's not a to-do list because that would be like I feel like it would be too busy and I keep like a to-do list separately but a really useful thing that you can do is maybe have two color pens a blue one and a red one and the blue one can be like things that you really need to do things that are important deadlines or appointments or things that you just need to sort out like dropping off a package that needs to get returned for example and then the red one can be things that you really want to do maybe like a box fit class seeing a friend and I feel like that way it will really help you visualize the balance that you have with let's call it after work activities or if you don't do work how you are balancing out things that you're doing in your spare time or like hobbies and stuff i think when you're able to visualize something i strongly believe that that helps you to see things more clearly so when you can see in colors you can be like let's just say everything was red you could be like wow everything that i'm doing I don't do anything that I really enjoy or that I really want to do and that already help you have that balance. Writing things down, I can't hop on enough about how much that helps me. When I'm going through like a bad time or when I feel like I'm stuck in a rut, I often go into a tor into a turmoil, <laughs> into a turmoil because I'm thinking continuously in my mind about all of the things that I need to be doing and I just get overwhelmed because I think I can't do all of this or I feel pressurized because it's just so much and it feels like it's all due like so soon it's very stressful and I feel like when you're able to write things down you can clearly prioritize things take the problems away like put them on the page and say logically when can I do these things what's important etc and not feel like you need to hold on to them often I find that I actually have less to do than I previously thought or some of the things that I'm thinking about that are giving me stress aren't maybe as important as I'm making them seem if you try to do everything at once you won't get anything done like it's impossible to do everything at once and if you make yourself feel like you need to sort it all out straight away there's a good chance that you'll, one, fuck around, which I do, like, feel like there's so much to do that I'm like, oh, I can't do any of it. Or you'll just feel so overwhelmed that you'll be trying to do little bits and pieces of things all over the place and you won't complete one task. And that makes you feel like you're putting in work and not getting anywhere. This is my method that I have for writing things down when I feel overwhelmed. So I have my calendar, which has like appointments, and things that I have like coming up like events and then I also have a notebook and in there I often I guess you could call it like a journal I'll write things about how I'm feeling I'll say to myself okay what are all of the things that are making me feel that way what things are putting pressure on me and making me think I can't get things done or this is too much for me so I just brainstorm every little thing it doesn't matter how important it is it doesn't matter if it's trivial 
Anything that affects you is important to you. And if it's important to you, then you should write it on the list. It doesn't matter if it's important to somebody else or if somebody else would think it was stupid. It can be like a personal list just for you. Write down everything that's affecting you that is making you feel crappy and down. Just get it out on that page. Then what I like to do is I have a sticker system and I label all of the stickers. And I think the labels that I give them are, this is something that I can change. This is not something that I can change. This is not something that I should worry about and this is sorted. What this helps me do again is visualize the things that are affecting me and look at them on a color basis to understand what things are necessary to be worried about, worrying about, what things I shouldn't be worrying about. So basically it kind of gives me an idea of the things that I do have control over, what I don't have control over, and off the back of that labeling system, I can then make actions. So for the things that I don't have control over, so let's just give a random example. You might have a, this is not the situation that I have, but you might have a landlord that is just an ass. That is not something that you have control over. What you do have control over is how you react to that person, how you deal with them, I guess where you live to an extent. So there's certain situations where you can't control it, but you can choose how you respond to it or you can take actions to make yourself feel better about it. So let's just say growing up, if you had no relationship with your family, maybe you need like counseling to help you deal with that, even though you can't change the fact that it was years missed when you were young, for example. Then you can also look at the things that you can change. And against the things that I can change, I write actions. So what I can do. So if I feel super stressed out because my apartment is in a state, then I might say, okay, this weekend I will set aside two hours where I sort out the storeroom. And I'm gonna get that done because that feels like a task that is something you're able to get done. I'm not saying I'm gonna sort out my entire apartment, must be perfect, I must suddenly have everything arranged, everything needs to be like just a certain way or it's not good enough. No, that is gonna put pressure on yourself and you're probably not gonna get anything done. If you give yourself measurable goals to help you get out of a bad place or little small hurdles, before you know it, those little things will like build up and you'll be like in a routine or you'll start to be coming out of that place. Before you know it, I feel like I got slightly distracted off the writing things down and sticker charts, but you understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> coming from? <laughs> coming from in terms of like writing things down prioritizing things, thinking of actions you can do, and that makes you feel like you're in control of your life. I often feel overwhelmed because I feel like there's a lot of situations that I can't help or I feel helpless or there's just too much going on that really helps me to prioritize and to logically look at things from a different perspective. This one is something that's spoken about a lot, but it is for a good reason, and that is exercise. Honestly, exercise and looking after your mental health go hand in hand in my opinion. One of the greatest things I ever did for myself was get into a routine of exercising and that's not to say that you need to be doing like an insane gym workout every day. Like gym for me, apart from obviously wanting to look and feel good, is seriously good for my mental health. It helps me to produce more serotonin, which I do not have a lot of. My body just doesn't produce that much serotonin. So when I get endorphins from the gym, that really helps me to feel like just that little boost of energy. I really do enjoy that. Or things like box, but if you go to like a class and you're with other people, often doing exercise in an environment where you get to socialize can be like really healthy and can help you kill two birds with one stone. So for example, sometimes when I feel like I've got so much going on in a week and I might not really have that much time to socialize. I might go out with a friend and we'll do like a long walk in the park where I'm doing exercise, but I'm also taking time to be with a friend and tend to other needs at the same time. So exercising, but really finding a balance um, and something that works for you in your day-to-day -day routine. Next on my list is hobbies. And I think I've kind of touched on this, but I really feel like doing something that you've always wanted to do or trying something new can really help you get out of a rut because your mind is like alive. I feel like when I was in one of the worst places I have ever been in, and this was like three years ago, everything in my life had just kind of come crumbling down on me. And I was just in this place where I didn't know what to do with myself. I felt so 
lonely and like I was so trapped in my thoughts, like literally trapped in my mind that I threw myself into something where I was learning so much that my mind was taking in other things that I was so busy and I felt like inspired about something new and when I would achieve something in like a new environment I felt capable again. Yeah, I think one of the biggest problems about when we get into a rut is often we feel like worthless or feel like we're working but we're not getting anywhere or like we keep getting stuck in the same place. Learning something new and doing something you've always wanted to do can make you feel like passionate and alive and accomplished and all of those things feed into like how you feel about yourself. Like when you achieve something, you know, that feeling of feeling like accomplished and proud of yourself, you know, you should be proud of yourself when you do great things. And don't forget to take time to say like, right, I've gotten this far, I'm good enough, I can do things, like look at what I have done, look at what I still can do, I have the ability to learn and do new things. The next point that I have is to do with writing things down again. Clearly we can hear that I am obsessed with writing things down. I definitely think that it has helped me to, and I learned to do this once in, I think it was when I studied entrepreneurship, that we had to write down for a week um, what we were spending our time on. So we kind of documented, like I spent X amount of time at the gym, I spent X amount of time watching TV, this amount of time on my phone, this amount of time with friends, Kitty? No. But then after the week, you would add up all of your hours and say, right, I spent X amount of time doing each of these things. And you would be mind blown, or maybe you wouldn't, as to how much time, myself included, people spent on social media and watching TV. Like, do not get me wrong. What I'm doing now, which is my hobby, is related to social media. I am on my phone a lot. It's what I would love to do um, with my life and as a job. So it's something I'm very passionate about. But often I find I use that as an excuse when I'm just on my phone meandering about. Honestly, I think it is one of the main reasons for the increased levels of anxiety and depression around the world. Comparing yourself to other people is a very difficult thing not to do. It happens in your subconscious. You look at something and you reference your life or you reference what you do or you reference your clothes, everything, and you just do like a little comparison. It's like it happens so fast and sometimes the best thing that you can do is just take a break from it altogether. When I racked up my hours, I was like, holy shit. I complain about things that I really, really want to do and I always say I don't have time for them. I say I want to go to art classes, I want to do like more sketching at home, a supper club with my friends once a month or little things that I want to get done, or maybe I want to be more organized and I always say I don't have time or I'm too stressed. My to-do lists are too long, blah, blah. But no, no, I just haven't prioritized correctly and it's an addiction, like it is 100% an addiction. And like sometimes it's good to have like a little break and watch a couple of YouTube videos and look at like some inspiration on Pinterest, but balance is literally key here. And I feel like so many people do not have balance. Like I am such a culprit of this and I definitely feel like when I have less time on my phone, I feel happier. Like my phone broke recently and I was like bleak about it and I couldn't really do anything on it. But then because I couldn't and I was waiting for like my new phone to come, I just, I did other things. Like I was surprised that I'd be like, oh, what should I do with my time now? I feel like we don't even let our phones go. We always know where they are. They're like part of our identity and I really feel like we need time to detach from them. Shut your phone off. I would think at one point mine was racking up to like four hours on my phone at least a day daily and to be fair i do watch a lot of youtube videos but either way that is so much time like on the way to work in bed in my break you know it's, we just look to it for like security it's this whole little other world and that we forget to sometimes be like involved in our own worlds and i feel like i've gone on a massive rant about that now but i definitely think that that affects how you feel about yourself and it affects your ability to delve into other things because you're so focused on this like little guy that you just can't separate yourself and sometimes you see yourself not as you should because you're looking at these like realities that we've created in this digital world. So put your phone down and take time. I challenge you to record the amount of time that you spend doing everything and 
maybe try to jig your week around based on the things that you make excuses about not doing or things that you feel like you can't because you don't have time. Is that really the case? Do you have time? Do you want to make the time? I challenge you. My last point and one of my most important points is to talk. Speak to people or speak to somebody, anybody, tell people how you're feeling. So often I wait until I break down or I let things build up, like I bottle things up, don't speak about them or I'm feeling a certain way and just don't bring it up. I think sometimes, I don't know, like it can be embarrassing to speak about how you feel or it's just difficult to try and get your emotions across. Sometimes I feel like I don't communicate that well or I'm not really saying what I mean. But people will not understand unless you talk to them. Or you might not be able to get advice or like let out some feelings that you've been bottling up if you don't speak to somebody. For some of us that might be going to see a psychologist, that might be helpful to us. You might have like a mentor in your life that you want to speak to, maybe a close family member, a friend, maybe an online chat room. Like there's a lot of different sources or like people that you can speak to and I just can't tell you how important it is. Sometimes you feel like you're holding on to all these problems or the ways that you feel and you don't think that anyone can relate or that you're so alone and it's just so much like you, it feels like tightness, like pressure in your chest because there's all these things that you're bottling up and you just need to like breathe and let things go and maybe get some advice and speak to somebody about how you're feeling. People can't support you if they don't know and I'm really bad at that. I'm like, can't you tell? Or I expect people to be mind readers, you know? Often Mike said to me like, baby, please talk to me about how you're feeling. And if you're feeling like really overwhelmed, the pressure, I can help you do things or we can do things together. And it's much more difficult to pick yourself up if you hit rock bottom and then cry and everything comes crumbling down and you feel overwhelmed. If you can express yourself, I think that you'll also feel a lot more confident in yourself. Like you can say how you feel and it will help you to feel like you know yourself in a way. Because sometimes we have all these feelings and we're like, oh, I don't know why I'm feeling so down or I feel so overwhelmed. Or you feel like no one can relate or like your problems are stupid. They're not stupid. Things that affect you and make you feel like shit are having... An effect on your life and are important to you and you need to take time to recognize those things and to prioritize you like that is NB make time to recognize the things that are happening in your life listen to signs in your body I absolutely love hearing feedback from other people about the things that they do in their day-to-day -day life that helps them feel motivated, helps them get out of a rut, helps them stay happy. Like I literally really love that. So even if you guys wanna DM me privately on Instagram, that's all good. I'll leave my link up here on the screen. Otherwise, leave a comment down below. Let me know maybe some of the tactics that you guys use if you found this video useful at all. I know I rambled on quite a bit, but I'm just very passionate about these things because I feel like I have had a lot of times in my life where I feel like I've really been like flattened down just in a really bad place and I've had to build up ways to get myself out of a rut and feel motivated and happy and inspired again. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'm so glad that we finally done another conversation with Sab. It has been way too long and i promise you guys that we'll do more videos like this if there are any more topics that you guys want to speak about please let me know i'm always here to make the videos that you guys want to watch if you did enjoy this don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to join the sab fam if you want to be part of our little crew here i'd love to have you i make two videos every week and until next time i love you guys so much thanks for watching